worship forever. I'll serve you forever. Yes, I will. I'll serve you forever. I'll love you forever. I'll love you forever. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give them the highest praise. You're listening to Glory 93.9 FM. Phil Thompson with My Response featuring Jubilee Worship. Just before that, you heard my girl join Nay Gibson. The song is called Worship Forever. Todd Delaney with I Will Call Upon the Name of the Lord. Psalms 18. It's girl talk time. <laughs> it's girl talk time. It's girl talk time. Yay. In your marriage, in your relationship, in your life, like in one yeah, week, things so of things day, happening. I didn't, we didn't be up and down, and I didn't been mad, and I didn't make up, and <laughs> mad again. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, but things. I'm still here. Things still here. change. Yeah, things change. But I'll tell you this: mm. I'm grateful for change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I am. Yeah. I'm truly grateful for change. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have it any other way. Yes. Me too. I would not have it any other way. I'm okay. grateful for change. Let's I'm glad. Hold up now. That's, that's real talk. Some girl talk. Marie, she looks so beautiful. Oh, thank you. These brows are just laid. This thank hair you. just. Oh, my God. Thank you. My shameless plug. These brows are brought to you by Inglot. Oh, exclusively really? at Eye Candy Makeup Store. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Actually, my entire face, except for my. My. Um, my base, because I ran out of Inglot okay. spray. Oh, so okay. I had to use the elf, the elf one. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I um. <laughs> and you look gorgeous as well, by the way. I love this plaid. You know something? <laughs> you are the only black person that I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I love plaid so much. Plaid is very not black. Listen, I, I prided myself when I was in college <laughs> in Canada. I prided myself on the fact that I was probably the only person on my campus black. that did not wear plaid. That did not. Yeah, no, because no. Oh, that's an American thing? That's white. That's a white people thing. Oh. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, no, we don't, we don't, we don't do that. Where should I do this? I try this makeup on like in two minutes, girl. First of all. I look at these brows. First like, of well, all. This one's shorter than this one. <laughs> well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Really see this. The brow specialist always tells me that eyebrows are always sisters, not twins. Yeah, but then when you really know brows and you know, you know, you do it for a living, you know. You, they should be able to be twins. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie this though, one, for for, for throwing on brows, they fleeky. 
And then I, I put it in my, my locker. I, didn't, I ran out of time because I said, I'm not going to be late today. I'm proud of you, by the way. I was actually going to let one of the girls put my lashes on and give me a little bit more liquid liner. Give me a strip. You are fabulous. But you know. You are fabulous. It's all good. You are fabulous. I'll tell you, I have some breakouts on my face today. Oh. I covered them really well, though. Yeah, because your, your face looks flawless. Yeah, I covered them, but I don't know where they come from. Oh. Well, you know, this it's the worst thing body. ever. It's the worst thing ever. And you just never know what you're touching. In the worst places. Like, I have one right here, like, smacked up in the middle. middle. Like, who has, Make like, a who? mole out of it. I don't know. A mole in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> like a little brown mole. A little bit black. Right. Soften up. So, all my all the, all the years that you've known me, I don't have a brown mole. But today, I will. Yeah, man, because that's how you are. <laughs> you just have all, we have, we have moles all of a sudden. <laughs> We have moles all of a sudden. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. All right, guys. So <laughs> yeah, <thank you. laughs> welcome to Girl Talk. And um, we're going to start off our conversation. We're talking about identity today. Mm. And we're going to start off our conversation with this video that um, yes. someone sent to me. Actually, one of our listeners. Hello. Oh, okay. Hello. Because we have listeners now. Okay. Just in case you didn't know. Yes. Uh, one of our listeners. Hey, Deb. Sent us this this um, clipping. And I, I shared it with Natalia. And it's about it's about um, the concept of being a whole individual because we're talking about identity. We're talking about mm-hmm. knowing ourselves. We're talking about how who we are, what we do flows out of um, our identity, so on and so forth. And so this conversation that we're about to play, um, I think that initially when I first encountered the video, I was like, this is so good for single people. But then I realized, wait a minute, no, married people need to kind of have this conversation as well, too. Especially when it when you're talking about two people coming together, whether you're looking for someone to complete you or not, are you a whole mm-hmm. person? We want to we want to use this to stir our conversation today. So I'm going to see if I can get some sound and let's see if we can get this played. Do you have to be whole in order to date? Ah, uh, man, I gotta say it, but no, I do not believe you have to be whole in order to date. I often think that this is something that's really pushed a lot, uh, especially in today's culture, because everybody's kind of recognizing their issues and their flaws and some of their weaknesses. So the go to is like, I got to get whole before I can pursue a relationship. Uh, But the truth is that broken people get in relationships all the time uh, and that oftentimes it is the relationship that is actually the very thing that brings wholeness. Uh, First of all, let's make this very, very clear. What is wholeness? I mean, uh, I don't I think wholeness is a pursuit. I think wholeness is a journey. I do not think that wholeness is a destination. I think this idea that you're going to go away for three months you're going to get off of social media for three months. You're just going to study yourself and then you're going to achieve a level of wholeness and then come back to the world. And now you have no brokenness, no scars, no wounds. You are completely healthy. And now a great healthy you is going to pursue a relationship. I don't know if that's very realistic. I don't because the moment you come back to reality and somebody hurts you or something happens or something pushes on a wound that you thought you were healed from, you're going to realize that there's still some brokenness that's still there. I think we're always pursuing wholeness. I don't know if we ever achieve a perfect place of wholeness. And I think you're doing yourself a disservice when you when you prolong dating or put off relationships because you're trying to work on yourself. I've seen people spend years working on themselves. And to be honest, uh, them being by themselves have actually made them more crazy, not has made them more whole. I think wholeness comes through pursuit. It is it is extremely possible to find somebody who actually brings wholeness to your life. In other words, uh, there's a void, uh, the ability to communicate with someone. Uh, There are certain issues in your life that this person actually helps bring clarity to you on. Uh, I have found great, great, great wholeness as a result of being in a relationship and being in a marriage. Um, I think you can work on yourself. I think you should work on yourself. What does working on yourself look like? Going to counseling. Uh, I think reading books. I think uh, being in community. I think working on your mind and your soul. All those things are good. Pursuing a relationship with God, fasting, prayer. All those things are great. But I don't know if I would not go out on a date because... I'm broken or because I'm not whole yet. 
Um, to be honest, I find people who refuse to go out on dates, who say they're pursuing wholeness, it's, it's actually making them worse. In other words, I see people sometimes uh, use it as an excuse because really what they are, they are afraid. They are afraid of rejection. They're afraid of getting their hopes up and being disappointed. They're afraid of being cheated on. They're afraid of not being axed out. They're afraid of just so many different things. So when you have a fear of being disappointed, you just say, you know what? I'm just going to go and be whole and get some wholeness. I, I don't want anybody crazy dating. I don't want you dating anybody who's crazy. I don't want anybody who's bleeding all over you uh, to be a person that you see as you rescuing them. But this idea uh, that I'm going to just get perfect before I find somebody, I don't know if that's realistic. Tell me what you think. Uh, I could be wrong, but this is just where I'm at. This is how I feel. And uh, I'd love to know your thoughts. Put it in the comments. I do not think you got to be whole I, I, in order to, to be in a relationship. I've seen people who've been damaged, uh, who have gotten married and gotten healed through their marriage because they were with somebody who was praying with them. They were with somebody who was keeping them accountable. They were with somebody who was challenging them. They were with somebody who was helping them think on a deeper level. So uh, my encouragement to you, whether you agree or not, is that if you're single and you're trying to pursue someone, you're trying to be in a relationship, uh, go ahead, go on that date, go on to Ruth Chris, go on to Applebee's, go, go ahead and go to Cheesecake Factory and uh, do that while you're pursuing wholeness at the same time. All right. Peace. Yeah. So that I found that to be very interesting because initially, like when the person first sent it to me, I thought that um, it was going to be directed towards just singles. Right. Because a lot of times, you know, I mean, right. we we I, some, I think it's something that the church does. The church tells you, don't look for this person to complete you. Get completed or whole or whatever, um, and then go and date, right? Mm -hmm. So initially that was my expectation, but then as he talked about how even for himself, like marriage has, being married to someone has helped to refine him, has helped to make him better. I don't know. As a single person, Italia, I have been made to feel like because I have things that I struggle with, I will never be able to be in a relationship with someone because I still have issues, because I still have stuff that I don't like about myself that I do, because I still have um, things that I'm working out for myself, like with within my own life. I've been made to feel as a single person, like until I get this sorted out, I'm not, I'm not gonna be in a relationship until, mm -hmm. until I can stop being selfish. Cause you know, they tell single people all, all the time, you know, marriage is, is about mm -hmm. being selfless. It's about give and, it's about giving, giving, giving. And when you've given all, you give more um, without expecting receiving. You know, that's they like right. to paint these pictures of of what um, being in a relationship or being in marriage looks right. like. Right. And so I, I struggled with that for many years, if I tell you the truth, mm -hmm. because I, I, I felt like almost like marriage became a dirty word mm. for me. Mm -hmm. It became a dirty word. It became... Um, the thing that I would never have for me for a while because I said Marisha you too messed up ain't nobody ain't nobody won ain't nobody won't be with you ain't nobody can put up with you Um, no I'm just speaking my truth I'm speaking my truth mm -hmm. and so I'm not there now thank God Um, um that there, there are there are things that God has done in and through me and, and the truth of of who God has created me to be is now my truth and and so I can say that confidently. However, I know that there are other persons who are walking the same journey. Hey, Pastor E.W. <laughs> yeah. uh, I know yeah, that there are other persons who are walking this this journey similar to to mine and similar to yours. And I think that I think there are some misconceptions when it comes to knowing ourselves, when it comes to how who we are affects our relationships, affects the things that we do in life affects our approach to to difficult times to good times um dictates our filters that we talked about and so i want to be in, begin the conversation by talking about the single perspective and i want to make a bold statement um that some people may not like but i just want to say y'all stop making single people feel like something's wrong with them like they have a disease like singleness is a disease 
because that's how that's how single people feel mm -hmm. especially wow. if you are a female and you know what it's not so in the church anymore funny. it's everywhere that's so crazy because it's so opposite of what the bible says about single being single and um, yeah. being married yeah you know? and we always do that we always switch things up because we want what we want and we make what we want right so right 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 you know when um in most cases it's su such the op opposite it's yeah. it's it's not it's like i i posted this the other day um and i want to make i want to want to make sure people understand that i'm not bashing men but I posted the, posted this um, quote the other day on my status. Stop telling single women to pick better men. How about we start telling men to be better men? <laughs> because a lot of times as women, we get accused, we get chastised, we get ridiculed for picking toxic men. Mm -hmm. I mean, what what about the men that we're picking? Do they have no, you understand? Do they have no responsibility? Right, so these, I get you, I get you. some of the stigmas that when it comes to being single and, and it's scary, it's scary now, Italia, I feel like it's scary now because there was a point in time when it was just coming from the church. It's not just coming from the church now. It's everywhere. It's in the world. Single women in the world, in business, or just in the world in general, have this pressure when people see you hitting your thirties and they're like, oh, you're not married. Something's wrong with you. You're mm -hmm. crazy. Um, I actually heard someone say to another single woman, the reason that you're still single is because you still got too much issues. Yep. Say what? Yep. Mm -mm. Yep. I've heard I've heard it. And so it this is an interesting this is an interesting one. I don't know what it's like for you from the married perspective. I know that I know that um being <laughs> I was talking to, to talking to Dalton the other day and Dalton was like Marisha you know God preparing you for marriage and he's like you you know you really can't get rid of the person like you can't close the door he said you know like how oh, you could go to bed and you could close your door that's right and leave everybody on the outside mm -hmm. he's like you could close the door but that person is gonna be right in the bed <laughs> next to you <laughs> right oh. there so you could close the door but you close the door with them in in the room <laughs> you know um, so I don't know what it's like for you in reference to like your journey to finding yourself, mm. how if how it changed or maybe your perspective of who you are changed when you got married. Mm. There's so much. Um, for me, I, I I I think I always knew who I was. I am who I mm -hmm, am, mm -hmm. and um, what I wanted to do, pursue, and be, and all that kind of stuff. And let me just say too. Um, I agree that you don't have to be whole, um, but I think you must be in a position or you must have a perspective where, or posture where you're um, very aware of who you are and where you're trying to go and where you, what you want okay. what you want to be. So you have to have that. You can't go in blank. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't go in blank. Um, I don't know what I who I am. I don't know what I'm doing. Blah blah blah. Um, this guy, I'm with this guy because I just happen to be this guy. No, um, no, we we don't expect for you to be whole. And, and I agree, there's no such yeah. whole person, complete, completely complete person. Right. Um, but again, you must have that posture where you know where you're going, so that you know what decisions you need to make. Um, you know, um, what you want to do. Yada yada. For me, um, I've always been in that position where I um, know who I am, where I want to go, what I want to do, what I want to be. Um, but I think in some of our conversations before, I told you there were some conversations that were lacking. Yes. Um, because when you have those conversations, you would know um, what decisions you need to make. And right, yada, yada, right. Yada. So what happened, and I think what's happened with me, is I've placed myself in a position of frustration because um, wow. when you know what you want and who you are, what you stand for, and then you see, on the other hand, that this isn't lining up oh. with, um, you know, that person. Right. You know, there is that frustration. And then um, what do you do? Because you're married. Because you're there. And you can't just close the door. No, no. You and can't just close the door. You can't lock them out. No, you can't. Um, and so... For me, I've um, I've found myself in a place where you know, and I, I don't want I don't want you guys just to, to to think that um, oh my God, my situation is so horrible. 
yes, in my marriage, there are some challenges. In every marriage, there are challenges that we're faced with. And so for me, it's uh, I'm at this place where, it's, where where we're finding ourselves as a couple. Ah. Uh. We're finding ourselves as a couple. See, that's what I was hoping you would get into because the the true the true sentiments, the true reality of marriage is the two becoming one. one yeah. So there is a re identification of yourself from yeah. being single being a single person right. into joining your life with someone else. Right. That um I think sometimes is undervalued. Mm-hmm. Not fully expressed and talked about. I know a lot of married people, a lot, a whole lot of married persons. Mm-hmm. One of the things that married people very seldom talk about is how how they're, they're joining with this person has literally changed them. Mm-hmm. But we're on the outside looking in mm-hmm. and we can see how you've changed. changed. Wow. Wow. Because it has changed you. Yeah. You're not the same person. Well. Mm -hmm. You're definitely not the same person. Mm -hmm. And you may not see the changes as something that's drastic because you're in it. Right. Right. And the the perspective is always different when it's objective instead of being subjective. Mm -hmm. So I have lots of married friends and I always say to them, you know, you, you think that you're the same person. You're not. You're not. And they say to me, well, no, it's you. And, and I'm like, no, you, you're you married. It's okay. Like, And they want to be like, well, no, I'm the same person. And like, I haven't changed. But I'm like, no, like, it's okay. Good. It's okay that your identity has now been fused with this other Perfect. individual's mm-hmm. identity. It's supposed to be like that. Yeah. I think that it's not talked about enough. So for those of us who are single, as we're walking into these relationships, as, as we're preparing for marriage, we don't expect to have to to relinquish parts of ourselves we don't expect to have to say no to certain things and and to change consider changing our perspective we just think oh like you know we're just gonna, especially because this is girl talk mm-hmm. so it's gonna be unicorns and <laughs> and we're gonna make breakfast every morning yeah. and it's gonna be so amazing and and life is going to be awesome and it's just going to be me and my hubby. And then when we have kids, it's going to be me, hubby and the kids. And, and it's going to be all rainbows and flowers and sunshine and on a cloudy day and, oh, you know, all that good stuff. And so <clears throat> I think that um, I think it's a conversation that needs to be had, that there's great change that happens in terms of who you are as a person. Right. When you decide to join your life with someone else. And I think that the the number one thing that we're trying to convey in beginning this conversation about identity is that it's important for you to know who you are mm-hmm. and where have an idea, have an intention of where your life is headed. I first of all, I'm a church girl. I I love I love the Lord's Church. I said this before on a previous show. I love the Lord's Church, so I'm not going to be bashing churches. But there's one thing that one little cliche when it comes to dating mm-hmm. and being single and males and females that I've heard a few pastors say that bothered me at first because I was like, I felt like it was very sexist. Mm-hmm. And then um, as I matured, my perspective changed. So one of the, one of the things that I heard pastors say a pastor say several pastors say is that as a as a woman if you're looking for a man he has to have a mission for you to submit to that's the whole submission thing so it's not about you being how can i say this dominated by a man but it's you being able to serve the mission that he has so you submit to the purpose and the call of God mm-hmm. on his life as a woman, I initially had a big problem with that. Mm. If I tell the truth. <laughs> My problem was, I tell you, it made me feel like, so he has a mission and mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. I don't. Mm-hmm. So I, I submit to this man and what he just, like what mm-hmm. I, my dreams, mm-hmm. my goals, the thing that God has called me to do. So what happens to that? Right. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, as I matured and then I took the time to study the scripture Mm -hmm. because we should do that. Mm -hmm. Right. So I took the time to study the scripture 
And that same scripture also tells husbands to submit to their the wives. wives. Same passage. The one that tells me to submit to my husband yes. tells the husband to submit yeah. to his wife. It's a and so I, I feel like we, who, let's, let's make sure that when we place blame, let's, let's, let's create a two-way street for blame. Yeah. Please, let's do that in this conversation about how how women are supposed to be and and the choices that women make when it comes to men let's 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 have a two way street conversation men men make big better choices than the women that you choose and be better too cuz we're not just don't just place the responsibility or the weight of being better on the women mm-hmm. and making better choices on females cuz it's not just us right it's not just us. We we don't have relationships with ourselves. Yes, exactly. We have relationships with persons of the opposite sex. And that is a very loaded statement that I made just now. And I wanted to make sure people understand that I'm making like about five statements <laughs> in that line right there. But no, our intent is to have a relationship with the opposite sex. But we can't find somebody who we can't make up a human. We can't, we you know, we can't just go into the store and be like, okay, I want him to be tall. And I want him to love God and I want to be able to look at his face and just give him a little bit of muscle so he could lift the heavy things. And I want him to be kind. I want him to be rich. Mm -hmm. Go and press a button. And then all of a sudden this human being um, appears in front of us. That's not the way it works. You know, we have to to deal with what's set before us. We 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 have to accept what's been handed to us. Mm And I feel like there's a misconception for those of us who are not married. Mm -hmm. And then I think for those who have just gotten married, they enter into marriage with a misconception that like, you know, I'm just going to be me. Mm -hmm. He's going to be him. Mm -hmm. And he could do him. I could do me. But we can do our doing and we can bring our doing together. Mm -hmm. And nothing's going to have to change. No, that's not Um. It's. Uh, I'd say this too. Um, I mean, I get all of this right, but um, this, there's the, the the term, the science term, that talks about when two things come together and they rub together. Yes. And um, what's that? What's that scientific uh, mm, term? Mm, mm, um, mm, mm, mm. Musician. Musician. <laughs> 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 so he uses it a lot too when he talks about it. Um, osmosis. No, not osmosis. Um, oh, the name. The name just escaped me. I was just about to call his name. Um, the name of the scientist that said it. Um, M- musician, when two, musician. <laughs> when two things rub together, there's always a residue from what the other that leaves on. Ah, right. that's cool. Yes, and so it, and you have that too in marriage because I see it on a very superficial level. I see where with my husband there's some little things that I begin to pick up, <laughs> some things that he does. And right, says, right. And I myself like, <laughs> I don't do that. I don't say that. Sifrin <laughs> says that. I don't do that. You know. <laughs> And I find even with him that there's some things that I do and say that, that he, he picks up. Yeah. yeah. And and so with baby and with the baby now, I'm sure she's gonna, you know, she's gonna pick up from both of us. Right, right. You know? And so that happens on a on a very superficial level. Yeah. And um but um more internally and emotionally too. Um, this is why you need to be strong and be very aware of who you are because um, there are some things that are going to rub off, but you want to make sure that, you know, that you're able to differentiate and you're able to um, pull back and see and kind of assess, you know, what like it what's is really happening thing, mm-hmm. yeah, with you. Um, and for me, um, I know one thing about me, um, about my, who I am that has come forward um you know, that's has been kind of highlighted in my marriage is um, a little bit more of my personality, my emotions and stuff like that. And I never really saw it like that. You mm. know, um, my my husband, he'd be like, oh, I see you do this. I'm like, yeah, but not like that, you know. And so it really is put, put me in a position where I've had to sit and think and look and have that kind of introspection about, um, you know, what I've been doing, saying, being right. around my husband. Right. And um, because sometimes um, in being, too, you don't re- realize that, um, I, I, say, I use Yasmin as an example, as my sister, you know, she always says, you're usually so bossy. I'm like, I'm not bossy. Am I, b-? I saw the question, am I bossy? <laughs> <laughs> Do I boss people around? Do I really? Is that oh, who I am? I, is that how you see me? Wow. You know? And um, I really started to think about it, and I realized, yeah, I could be a little, I could be a little bossy. That's 
that's the way I am sometimes. And so, because I'm aware of that, of what I do and how I am. You have to be careful with how, how yeah. yeah, how mm-hmm. I how I speak now to my husband mm-hmm. and what I say, and um, even around with people around me, my staff and whatnot, because um, I'm thinking, I mean, I mean, you are who you are. You are who you are. Yeah. But at the same time, you don't, you don't want to offend. Um, because sometimes people misconstrue what it is that you're doing and you being who you are. I'll tell you this. All of my all of my life, um, from I knew myself, people always said to me, you think you was woman. <laughs> you think you was woman. You think you was woman. You think you was uh. woman. It wasn't until, I'll never forget it, I was at a youth leaders conference. I was at a youth leaders conference. I was in Washington, Maryland. I was in Washington, Maryland, and I was listening to this guy speak. I don't know if many of you know him. His name is Nick Vachichi. He's the guy that has no arms and no legs. He's a he's a motivational speaker. He's a believer. Uh-huh. Um, he has a wife and children, but he has no arms and legs. Okay, whoa. He just has a bodice. Okay. Right. And one of the things that um, he shared in the in the conversation, he said that he said to all of you, he said to all of you out there who have been told all of your life that you're too bossy or you think you're too grown or you think you're in charge or you always like to tell people what to do. He says you are a leader mm. and that is who you are. Hello. And your, your communication, your direction, your speaking to people, how you interact with people, yeah. you are learning how to exactly. exercise exactly your leadership abilities. He says, do not let someone tell you that something's wrong with you because you feel like you have the right to speak to something when it's not being done right. Mm -hmm. He says, however, you have a responsibility now that I've told you that that thing on the inside of you is the leader on the inside of you. You have a responsibility to hone your leadership talents, gifts, and abilities. That's what I was about to say to you. Yeah. So now that you, now that I know this and I see this, because that's how I see myself. I see myself as a leader. So now it says to me now, JJ, you have to be a little, you you must show a little bit more grace in how you exercise um, this gift of the skill that you have um, yes. again when you're speaking to your staff and speaking yes. to your um, to your to your husband cetera, when you're talking yeah. to your family members yeah. when you're communicating with yourself oh, yeah. yes because we're so hard we on ourselves I am hard on me I wanted to share this um this um I heard this I love Wendy Williams <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I love Wendy, guys. You know, um, in spite of what you, some people there might feel about her. Right. I love Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> and so on one of her shows, she was talking, you know, hot topics. Yeah. She was talking about um, Paris Hilton, you know. Can okay, call, you want to play it? Can we call names? Yeah, that's fine. On, I was just going to, um, did she read it? Let me see. Yeah, I think she reads it. Okay. Let me just pause that right there. Um, that would I be able to see it so I could adjust it to the perfection? Oh, She's playing it. okay. You don't know exactly where. I I found it, but it's such a, it's a very short clip. So if I press play from here, would it be it? Um, I think it's right after that. I think. Let me see. You could press. <coughs> Let me know when you're ready, and I'll just turn it up. Sorry, guys. This is reality radio. Yeah, <laughs> All right, so when you press play, we should have sound. I was hearing the music coming from out, you know, the place. And it was all everything that we get ripped to right here at the show. And, and I wasn't mad at it because... 37. Okay, well, Paris was talking to Cosmo. <laughs> and she said, I feel like I'm an incredible woman and I deserve an amazing, uh, someone amazing. I've worked too hard just to give my life to someone they have to be perfect. Got that? Yeah. Okay, you heard that. They have to be perfect. Well, oh. They have to be perfect. So oh. she was actually engaged and she broke it off. Because the person... Because she didn't feel like the, perfect, the person was the P word. Perfect. Here we go again. Perfect. So does that make her... Perfect. If you want to call in, the number is 825-5433. If you'd like to call into the show, we would love to hear your perspective. Um, we're talking about identity and, yes. 
and we're having a conversation about being whole as an individual before you go into a relationship, before you go into a marriage, while you're in a marriage. Apparently, Paris Hilton thinks she's perfect. Yeah. And she's requiring perfection from her significant other. And I hope she finds it. Good luck with that. (laughs) Good luck with that, Paris. Yep. Uh, That's... Wow. In the however, bubble. though, however, though, let's tell the truth, Italia. Okay. Let's be real here. Mm-hmm. We have little unicorn brains as women. Really? We don't like to tell the truth. Yes. We have these like, OK. Remember, you asked me when I was sharing about my, the last relationship that I was in that was ended, the last guy I was dating. And you asked me, so when you were on the first day, were you thinking, am I going to marry this guy or am I not going to marry this guy? In that particular situation for that person I was dating, I did not have that thought. But there have been times when I've dated men in the past. On the first day, I'm looking at him like, can I marry this dude? Yeah. Do you do the like name thing too? Like, No, 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 yeah. no. Do people do the name thing? Seriously? No. Marisha, seriously? When I was younger though. People do the name thing. When I was younger? That's crazy. I'd be like, mm, no, I can't date him because his name. last name don't go good with my first, first name. name. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, people do that crazy. No, but I, I am guilty. I'm guilty. And here's what, here's the place that I'm at now. I'm at the place now where my my considering of whether or not this person is someone that I can spend the rest of my life with is now from a sober place. It's not from a fantasy place. Okay, yeah. Because most of us as women, when we first meet an individual, we are in fantasy land. Men are, you know, they got their own little situation going on. But this is girl talk. This is not guy talk. This is girl talk. So we have our fantasies. We have our fantasies. You meet a guy. He's good looking. He's nice. Hopefully he is. Well, we're in unicorn world. Mm -hmm. Fantasy land. He's perfect. He can dress. Mm -hmm. You know, he smells good. You know, you like talking to him. He has a nice voice. Praise Jesus. He has a job. Glory to God. And so in our minds, so yeah, like I could see myself married to him. And oh, yeah, like, oh, he's a businessman. Oh, this is going to be good because, you know, he's going to take care of the family and we're going to go on trips together. And this is going to be great. And, you know. Yeah, like this is just going to be wonderful. And then you start to date the person and then you realize they have anger issues. Oh, boy. And they don't really quite know how to talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. you know, this person starts to speak to you inappropriately. But because in your head you haven't sobered up, you're still in fantasy land. And if you tell the truth, there's a little struggle in your identity with who you are because that's why you're going to accept Right. The fact that this person is not speaking to you appropriately. And we're so good at, at just reasoning it. The and whole thing justifying out. the fact yeah. that, oh, no, that's he's just, just the person, he's just mad. Yeah, yeah. No, like, mm-hmm. no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we, we find No. It. We justify it all up. But we no. That's not good. No. Until, wow. And I am convinced, based on my own personal experiences, it stems out of our belief about ourselves. Wow, mm-hmm. Because... There has to be Very something that you up. believe about yourself that tells you that you can put up with that, that it's okay, that you accept that. Mm-hmm. You accept someone to, to speak to you mm-hmm. any kind of way, treat you any kind of how, even to take it to the extreme. Oh, he, he just hit me because he was mad. What? I try not to have such like <laughs> bad reactions to stuff like that because sometimes it can be offensive to people, but right. I can't help my reaction because it's serious. It's serious. No, no one should be hitting you. No, no one should be hitting you. And you should see your value and your worth as a woman to know that that's not okay. Not only should you should you not. No one should be hitting you. No one should be speaking Speaking to you you in a negative way, pulling you down, telling you you're never going to be anything, that you're a horrible person, that you're ugly or whatever kind of abusive language is being used. It's not okay. And if you have said within yourself that it's not that bad it speaks to an identity crisis Mm -hmm. and in in the most loving way we're saying to you today get out of that relationship Mm -hmm. get away from that person and figure out get help help and figure out who you are figure out who you are figure out who god has called you to be find out what you like Mm -hmm. find out if you like going to the movies by yourself or if you don't like Mm -hmm. go shopping 
go for coffee. Mm-hmm. Do listen. And that's what they, that's what they <sighs> need to do. They need just need to um, be able to spend time with themselves. Um, have those kind of conversations. Um, I think you know. Again, I I'm a very I'm a doer. <laughs> you know where we um, I know we say a lot of things to people. Well, you got to do this, you got to do that. But people are really lost and they don't know. They don't know how how to. They don't know how, how to. to. How do I find myself, Marisha? How do I know that I'm happy with me and this is me and this is what I should be doing? We got to shut it down, Adalia. Yeah. We have to shut it down. One of the one of the the way the way that I began the journey. I stopped I stopped asking people for their perspective of me. Mm-hmm. I was very guilty of that. Mm. I wanted to know, well, what do you think? Yeah. So even down to like sometimes getting dressed, I would send a friend of mine a picture. What do you think about this? I had to stop doing that. Mm. I had to stop that. I had to stop looking for people's approval or disapproval. Mm-hmm. I had to stop allowing outside influences right. to dictate my thought process. Mm-hmm. And I had to shut it down and I had to say, Marisha, you are a human. At the time that I was doing it, I was an adult. So I had to talk to myself. I said, you are an adult. You are capable of making a decision decision without the input of another individual. That's what it was for me. Now you saying that brings me to, it helps me remember that even like people come to me for weddings and stuff. And um, they make, I always always, always had an issue with this comment. Um, I have to see if, if my hubby or my fiance likes it, my makeup. Oh. Uh, do you think? Do you think we should be getting permission from? I mean, like, <laughs> if he likes it, my Ooh. hair. I can't do that because he don't like it. Ooh, that's not. I know. I don't. He don't like. Mm. I don't like my makeup like that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm telling you. He don't like. Yeah. Now let me tell you. And for me. Like, um, I love colors. You know I love colors in my hair, right? And so, and my husband's quite the opposite. He's very, very um, conservative, and he want the straight hair, the perm hair look, and the sweep, and the whatever that need. 90s R&B. <laughs> oh, he, he loves that look, right? Wow. So now me, I know that I have taken that. Take that, take that, put it in the back. Hubby likes that. Right, mm-hmm. but now, on a daily basis, I'm being, I'm being me, I'm being me. Oh, that's good, Italia. I'm being me. Um, I remember mm-hmm. when I went to get a, I went, I, I, I told him, I said, "Hubby, I'm gonna get green in my hair." When I even had the green mm-hmm. in my, he's like, "What? You gonna put? Don't do that. I don't like that." I said, "Okay, my." I said, "Listen, you gonna like it." I went, I got my green, I put my green in, and he, I said, "Now, nah, do you like it?" He said, "Yeah, it look good, you know." I said, I know it looked good. <laughs> I did know it was going to look good. And he liked it. You know, but like the other day we had the christening. Right. I saw you. You were blown. I had my hair blown, blown out. out. Straight oh, black. Gosh. He, he was, was in, in his world. Aww. Why was he telling everybody, oh, that's my wife here. That's a. Oh. He loved it. My anniversary is coming up. I'm going to slip it out right now, but my anniversary is coming up. And I know he likes my hair straight and whatever. So I'm going to blow up my hair for my anniversary. I'm going to keep it like that for a minute, and then I'm going back to what I like. I like my natural hair. Mm. I like my natural hair. So I do me. Sometimes he doesn't like it. He doesn't. So. But he, he he's okay. He, he settles down. He goes, you know. So what? Mm. I do me. I, I can't do nobody so else. So the thing is, okay, because you're asked, you're, asked, you're asked a loaded question just now. Mm. Do I, as a, as a single or engaged woman, mm-hmm. Do I seek this man's approval mm-hmm. for the wedding day, mm. or just in general? Oh, Adaya, I, this is this is the part of me that God has to work on. <laughs> Let me hear y'all. This. Don't judge me. No, but do not tell me how to fix my hair. Don't tell me how to fix my makeup. <laughs> don't tell me what to wear. <laughs> and, don't, see, and see, that's what that's the see, and that's why it's so important in the knowledge phase. Don't do that. Because what you tell me to do, yes. I'm going to do the opposite. opposite. Yeah. So don't walk up in my life. <laughs> okay? Don't don't yes. listen. Don't walk up on me. Yeah. Oh, I like curly hair. I will keep straightening my natural Some hair. Some women change and they accommodate just to make I will the keep guy. Sh- the fact that you tell me mm-hmm. that this is what you prefer, I will do the opposite. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. 
Now I say God working on me, y'all. God is working on me. I'm only yeah. releasing my truth. Yeah. I'm only releasing my truth. I just I just saying your girl, you know, just I, See, I got a little stubborn in me. I feel like that conversation comes up because or, or, or someone would say that again because they're trying to please someone. Yes. And here's the thing, Atalia. Nice, not in like, a positive way either. Like I mean, you like, said, like you said, you do it for your husband because you know that's what he loves and you know he appreciates it. Mm -hmm. That's not people pleasing. Mm-hmm. That is you doing your duty as a wife to please your husband. husband. Mm -hmm. That's two totally different things. Yeah. I think that there are things that I can do, even in a dating sense. Like, let's say, we're not talking about, when I say dating, I'm not talking about you just met this person and you're dating. I'm talking about, like, you're in a relationship, you're headed towards engagement and marriage. I think there are some compromises that can be made, not for this person's approval of who you are, mm -hmm. but because you care about them. I think it's the place that it's coming from. Yeah. I, that's what I think. Yes. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna stop straightening my hair and wear my hair curly because that's what you prefer and we've only been dating for a month, that's people pleasing. Yeah. And I'm trying to get you to like me. So what I'm doing is I'm actually using manipulation. Yeah. Mm. Because I'm doing the thing that you would like to get, get you, you to, to like, like me. me. Yeah, that ain't cool. That's people pleasing. Mm -hmm. That's manipulation. If we've been dating for a year or two, we know that engagement is just around the corner. And you say to me, well, hey, babe, um, we're going out tonight. Can you, like, not straighten your hair just for tonight? Mm -hmm. I'd be like, if, if Marisha answered this question, I'd be like, do I have to? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I am speaking no, the truth <laughs> about who I am. And I'm like, do I have to? Oh, okay, fine. Yeah. And then, you know, yes. because I am me. Yes. Because I am me. And because I'm at the place now where if I'm if I'm at this, this place now, I care about you. Mm -hmm. You make this request of me. I, I, I'm going to go wet my hair. Right. Right. And I, mm -hmm. but, you know, I probably going to go get a little curly mm -hmm. weave piece and throw that mm -hmm. in there so it could be, you know. <laughs> red or blue or right. pink and curly you know but <laughs> right 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 but mm -hmm. I'll, I'll do it i'll do it mm -hmm. i'll do it but at that time now i'm doing it because i know what's gonna make you happy right and if i'm in a relationship with you i'm not, I'm not gonna fight making you happy right mm. i'm not gonna fight making right. you happy um but where do we draw the line though where do we draw the line and i am um, i'm i i am in a little situation right now where I'm, I'm ask, I've been asking myself, you know, are you too much for this person? Because mm. I'm a lot. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who are in denial about who you are, I pray that this conversation sparks something on the inside of you to do some intros introspection, sure. to be truthful about who you are. Mm. I know that I am a handful. I know it. <laughs> I know that I am a lot. Mm -hmm. I am dramatic. Mm -hmm. I'm very expressive. Mm -hmm. I am very colorful and not just my purple hair. <laughs> but my personality is a very colorful <laughs> one. Mm -hmm. I like to get what I want. Mm -hmm. And I will do whatever it, it takes. takes to get what I want. I am not in denial about who I am. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm talking mm -hmm. or dating or, mm -hmm. you know, trying to get to know an individual, I'm not going to pretend like I'm not mm -hmm. this colorful, mm -hmm. over the top, Type. dramatic, mm -hmm. a lot to handle person. Mm -hmm. Because then what's going to happen is that later on down the line, when my true colors come Something, out, you can be like, whoa, yeah, who, who's, who's this? That? Yeah. Who's this? Yeah. Where did you come from? Mm -hmm. How many of you were in there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yes. Um, and I think that's that's one of the <laughs> it's one of the mistakes that we make. Some most of us are not aware mm -hmm. of it. Yeah, I wasn't aware of it. I wasn't aware of how I was being all soft and sweet and nice and pretending like I'll just do whatever you want at first when I first started talking to that guy. Oh, I wasn't aware. I just was doing it. Wow. I didn't know I was doing it until someone called me out on it. Until someone who knew me very well saw me interacting with this person and they're like. That's not you. Um, what who, are you who's, doing? who's that? <laughs> and in fact, the person who said it to me, it was a male friend of mine. Uh -huh. The person who said it to me, he's like, can I, can I have her? Can I be friends with her? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, Cause I, so you, I don't want to be friends with you no more. I want to be friends with her because she's a yes woman. Whoa. <laughs> Called me out. Oh, my gosh. You know, so sometimes we're not aware. 
sometimes we're not aware of how we lose ourselves or we hide ourselves. ourselves. We do mm-hmm. it. I think I did We it do too. it. I did it. Yeah. When I, dated. I did it when we dated to some extent. Um, and then, um, I don't know, boy. I, you know, I did it. I um, You hid some parts of some yourself. Some parts of me, yeah. But I think it, that's a was, natural, I think that's a natural thing that we do. I mean, and um, for most for the most part. Right. Um, because the, you have some people who are just um, abrasively themselves from day one. <laughs> you know, they just do not care. You know? Ooh. But, um, yeah, no, I think I did that to some extent with my husband. Um, and um, now, for me, I think he sees that Italia, I guess that's the boss and leader in me. Mm-hmm. I... Um, Time, time is a thing for me. Um, I get, I blow steam when I'm late. When you're late and you're causing me to be late, I could be a little short tempered, and um, I want to move, and I could be very particular. They, well, my sisters, I know, I could be particular. Some things I just don't want. To. So yeah, I could be a lot too sometimes. Um. And um, but like I said, now I'm I'm at this place where I'm being not that I'm trying to change mm-hmm. who I am, mm-hmm. but again I want to do and be me more the gracefully. best, the yeah. best version of yourself. Exactly. I think I think that's important in this conversation because we're not in, we're not we're not saying that there's something wrong with you and you need to change everything right. about yourself. That's not what we're saying. Right. We're not saying that if there's a situation or circumstance you may find yourself in and you and you're you're receiving or accepting something that you shouldn't be. We're not saying right. something's wrong with you. No. You know, change yourself. No. What we're saying is in- do some introspection. Lo- let's look into ourselves because Italia and Marisha haven't arrived. And all every time we have a conversation, I know Italia has the same thing. I, I sit back and I listen to some of the things that I said and I'd be like, oh, girl, you need to change that. Mm-hmm. You need to change that. Um, And so... Uh, there are things about ourselves that we all need to change. We're going to be working on ourselves until we die. Yeah. And it's okay. There's nothing wrong with the fact that our identity is constantly evolving. There's nothing wrong with the fact that today I really, really love cookies and cream ice cream, but next year, the same day, same time, I now love rum raisin. There's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. And while that might, might seem like something really simple, um, I'll I'll speak my own truth. The twenty year old, the twenty two year old, because I'm thirty two now. The twenty two year old dating Marisha, and now the thirty two year old Marisha does not have the same taste in men. Right, right. I do not have right. the same taste in men. Right. Apparent perspective, personality. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just yeah. two totally. And in fact, I actually I'll say this. 29 year old Marisha had a different idea in her head than 32 year old Marisha. Mm. 29 year old Marisha would have dated somebody that 32 year old Marisha would mm-hmm. not date now. Mm-hmm. Would have entertained a conversation, gone out on a date, even considered a relationship mm-hmm. with someone who 32 year old Marisha would look at her and be like, girl, you got to be crazy. Uh. What were you thinking? Mm-hmm. You must be out of your mind. And so I think that evolution is important. Intentional evolution is even more important. I tell you, I intend to change things about myself. Yeah, I agree. And I, me too. Me I too. intend to do it. Mm-hmm. I'm not just going to, uh, I guess you could say, imagine it. Yeah. And be like, you, 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 <laughs> you hear people say all the time, "Oh, I want to lose weight so bad. I want to lose weight." You can want to lose weight for, I mean, until I kingdom them come and there's gonna be no change, and then you can, there's gonna be that person who is again intentional about it, ah. who's action takes action and does things to make sure that Listen. they lose the weight. So you could feel in your head a particular way. Oh, I want to be this particular way. This, um, I imagine my vision board and I'm going to be this, <laughs> that, blah, 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 blah. Right, but right, you right. never do anything, right? you know, right. to do it. So we're saying that um, from this day forward, like, are we living our lives um, with the intention of being better? Yes. You know, being our better and selves. Even, yeah. even when it comes to, like, 
taking action. I don't know if this is the truth for everyone else, but this is what I realized about myself, Italia. Mm. The the times when I set goals in my life mm. and I didn't follow through, it was because I didn't see myself worthy of the fight. Mm. Wow. Because anytime you're going to make a change in your life, it mm-hmm. it's going to require you denying yourself so, in yeah. some way, shape, or form. And I realize, I don't know if this is the case for anyone else. I can't speak for anyone else but myself. But I realized that my struggle, my difficulty was I didn't believe that I was worth the fight. I had a poor value placed on my own self. The price Mm -hmm. on who I am as a person from my perspective was low. Right. So trying to be a better woman in general I I just I remember for a, like a period of time in my life I was like you know what this this I am who I am y'all don't like me I don't care mm-hmm. I'm rude I answer people back I clap back I ignore people I mm-hmm. you know don't check for my facial expressions I'll walk into a room not speak to you you don't like it then don't talk oh, to me either and we'll yeah. just not talk to each other I was like that mm. Be- and it wasn't, and so many people would have probably met that version of Marisha, encountered her, felt like she was such a horrible person, mm-hmm. not realizing that it w- it didn't have anything to do with you. It was all about the fact that I did not consider myself worthy enough to even fight my habits, to fight my proclivities, to pr- to fight my vices. Uh, no, I just, I just, I was just like, whatever you okay. can, you, who you see. What you see <laughs> is what you're going to get. Um, and if you don't like it, mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. If I tell you the truth, even when it comes to my weight, mm-hmm. I was like that as well. Mm-hmm. I was like that. I was like, well, if you don't like big girls, this this, this, this is it, boo. So, mm-hmm. bye. <laughs> you have a problem with my size? Okay. But it wasn't from, it wasn't from a healthy place. Mm. It wasn't from a healthy place. And what I realize is that positive, positive things that are good, that are healthy, can come from the wrong places. Hmm. I could seem like I'm the most confident person. I got it all together. Mm-hmm. I got it going on. And my confidence can seem attractive, but it can be coming Come from the wrong place. place. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It can be coming from the wrong place. It can be coming from a place of pride where I feel like mm-hmm. I don't have to change who I am for anybody. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I'm it. Mm-hmm. I think um, you, um, you've got me thinking about me now and my um, from a business perspective mm-hmm. um, and who I am. I think for me, um, I think for me, um, I I see myself as a people pleaser mm-hmm. um, from the business perspective, mm-hmm. and that has not been so good for my business. Okay, okay, yeah, because um, you really can't please all of the people all the time. No, you know, as much as you try. I had a we had a, and for, as an example, we had a situation on Saturday. Um, young lady came and got her makeup done. Um, she showed a picture of what she wanted done. Um. It was um, a smoky eye with um, black litter. Mm-hmm. Um, and the artist, it wasn't me, one of the artists did it. Gave her the black, <laughs> smoky eye with the black litter. Mm-hmm. The woman was not happy. She was not happy. Um, no, she, the artist tried, 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 tried. And then I said, I said to him, I know I got it. I can make, make, make sure she, you know, mm-hmm. that's not doing this. I know I got this. Mm-hmm. And um, so I, I had to squeeze her in. Um, I, I, I really, we really should have let her go. I, I, it should have been the end of it. Mm-hmm. But again, me trying to be the people, the people pleaser that I am. I said to her, I said, come. And I did a beautiful makeup on her. Um, I made some adjustments to the eye. She said she wanted it brighter. I gave her a lighter color in the beginning and smoked it out around the mm-hmm, edges, mm-hmm. blended it nicely, put my little touch on it. Mm-hmm. And I looked at it and I said, it was good. <laughs> That's good. She looked at it and said, oh, my God, it's still dark. And she was unhappy. And I said, I'm so sorry, Mom. There's nothing else I can do. And she walked out there very unhappy. Very unhappy. And so sometimes, <clears throat> for me, I'm learning the lesson. Like, um, you, have to, you have to do you. 
you know, you can't, you, you have to be, I have to be the boss, be the leader, be the, 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 the entrepreneur that I am. And, and sometimes it may mean hurting people's feelings. You're not, you're not trying to do these things intentionally or, wow. or again from a bad place again. Wow. But you have to, some people are going to be disappointed. Some people are going to be disappointed. There's some hard things that you're going to have to say either to yourself, to your staff, to the customer, all right, um, that you don't want to, but you have to. Um, you have to be that person because if you don't, because you know what happens? I, I feel guilty. Mm. Then I start having these mind, these thoughts in my head and in my mind about. And you start to place yeah, blame on yourself. yourself. And that is not a healthy And it happens be. in relationships too. Right. It's crazy. I, I'll tell you this though, listening to your story makes me think about the fact that there are, there are, th- <laughs> there are times now this is girl talk. So we're going to talk about this broadly. Right. So even from the perspective of having somebody do your makeup and you having this picture in your head of what it's supposed to look like and then when they do it, it doesn't look right. But a lot of times we have these pictures in our head. We're going back to the fantasy right. land. Right, right, right. Fantasy land. Mm-hmm. Pictures in our head, ideas, concepts. This is what it's supposed it's to, to like. look like. Do you <laughs> know, do you know, Atalia, that, um, and I'm not ashamed to say this, do you know that I was, I was 30 years old when I really, really realized how I looked in the mirror. Listen, listen to me. I was 30 years old when I really realized what I looked in the mirror. And if you were to like, if you were to look, like go on my Facebook or my Instagram, look at my photos, Mm -hmm. look at how I dressed myself, who I was Mm -hmm. before my 30th birthday, you will see the shift in me. I shall do that. Okay. I had a completely misconstrued concept of how I looked. I thought, like, I thought I was this absolutely obese, Mm. overweight, fat, ugly woman. No, honey. Sexy. So I can't use that word on... Yeah. Okay. And (laughs) even though people... You probably would have met me then or knew me then. You did know. And, and, I, and I would be doing stuff and I would be dressing up. And But in my head, yeah. in listen to me, in fantasy, in my fantasy, which was in my mind, my reality, mm-hmm. I looked like this. And it was, it was an eye-opening moment. I will never forget the moment that I had. I never forget it. It was so eye-opening for me. And it completely shifted, like, this one moment completely shifted everything about me. Just after I left the studio, having my makeup done, the day of my birthday, when I went to take the photos. Mm -hmm. Literally? mm -hmm, I go into Eye Candy Photo Mansion. And, you know, the lady who takes the photo, she's amazing. She's Christine. gifted at what she does. She's a sweet lady. Christine DeMard, yes. And this is what she said to me. She said to me, she said, do you know, I could wash all of this makeup off your face. Mm-hmm. She said, and you would take absolutely glamorous photos. She says, because your beauty comes from the inside, not from mm. the outside. And she said to me, mm. she said, you are one of the most beautiful women I've ever met in my life. Wow. That's like, me? Yes, you, Marisha. I was like, me? Mm-hmm. And I started to cry because I'm, I'm tearing up now as I'm saying this. I started to cry because I was like, what do you mean? What do you, I was like, no oh, way. I was mm. like, I saw you have like, I mean, I've seen the pictures on your, I've yeah. seen your pictures. Uh-huh, like, uh-huh. no way. And she's like, no, she's like, it's just something about you. She's like, and then you know what she did? She like took like 50 more pictures than she was supposed to take. Wow. And she allowed me to see all of the photos that she took when I went back. We sat down, we had a conversation. And she was like, I'm going to allow you to get the extra photos. I usually don't allow people to do this. But. I'm going to allow you <laughs> to get the extra photos because these photos are absolutely amazing. Right. I tell you that completely at that one moment, it seems insignificant, but all of a sudden my eyes were open to who I truly was. Oh, wow. It's powerful. It didn't come from a man. Yeah. It didn't come from my mommy. 
It didn't come from a preacher. It didn't happen in church. I was taking 30th birthday photos. And it might have been said to me before, you know, Italia. Someone probably told me before I was beautiful. Someone probably told me before that, you know, I didn't need the extras to make myself look good. But this time I heard it. Mm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This time I heard it. Mm -hmm. And it completely shifted how I saw myself, Mm -hmm. my identity. It completely changed. And I say that to say this. If you, if, if we as women, if we look at one of our sisters and we see that she's struggling, we have no idea what our words can do. Hey. Our words are so powerful. Our words are so mm-hmm. powerful. You, we talked about it last week that you talked about how there were people who would come into your chair and they'd be suicidal. And by the mm-hmm. time you're done doing their makeup, like mm-hmm. things are completely different for them. We have no idea wherever our sphere of influence is. Mm-hmm. We have no idea what we can do for one another as women. If we use our words in a positive, positive way. way, if we use our words to simply tell the truth of what we see, because you know, a lot of times that we, as women, we look at you and we're like, she got it going on mm-hmm. her outfit put together yeah. her makeup mm-hmm. is right yeah, them she... shoes off the chain <laughs> i know you get a bag from but i want a bag <laughs> like tell her that yes i do tell yeah. her tell that her. and not because you want to know where she get her hair from or her makeup done or her bag from or her outfit you think you rock it better right no no stop being trapped stop it stop it <laughs> Do it because you genuinely want to be yeah. an encouragement to that yeah. woman. And say to her, listen, I know it took a lot for you mm-hmm. to get to look like okay. this. Mm-hmm. You look good. Yeah, you did, you did it well. You look good. <laughs> you know, you look good. That happened to me yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> sorry. What happened? Yesterday I got a phone call. I got a phone call yesterday. Um, from a 90 year old woman. What? <laughs> We're almost out of time. I got a phone call from a 90 year old woman who's a member of our church. Uh-huh. And she called me. She said, I just was, I was just calling you to tell you, you looked so beautiful in church today. Aww. She said, I love your hair color. She said, I love your dress. I love your necklace. I love your jacket. She said, you just look so beautiful yesterday. Oh my God. She couldn't get you. She couldn't get you on her head. She had to call you. Now, mind you, her daughter wanted to know where I got my clothing from and who does my hair. Right. And, you know, I have no problem telling people that. Right, right, Because, right. you know, I'm going to send you to the clothing store where I shop. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to send you to my hairstylist. Right. So, like, I no, I wasn't offended at all. So, I just want to say that to people. If you want to come and ask me, I'm not offended. I'll tell you. Right. I'm, I'm not going to hold no secrets either. Right, right. You want to know where I get my shapewear from? Whatever it is, I'm going to tell you. Yes. I'm going to tell you. Oh, you want to know God. who does my nails? I'll hook you up. Now, my nail techs don't really like new people, but I'll still tell you right? <laughs> oh my God. who they are. But yeah. that was so like, I, listen, I remember exactly where I was because I was on my way. I was driving out east and I was on Joe Farrington Road. Mm-hmm. I remember where I was when she said it to me yesterday because I was like, oh my gosh. Like, and then here it is. This woman is 90 years old. She didn't right. have to do that. No, 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 no. You left an impression. She didn't have to do that. We're supposed to be bowing yeah. at her feet right now because she done passed her three score and ten. <laughs> she did not have to encourage me in no any way, way, shape, or form. Mm. Here is this 90-year-old woman. She she remembered that her grandson and I went to high school together and had her grandson call me because she didn't have my number. Right. She had her grandson call me. And it wasn't until her daughters heard her on the phone talking to me that they said, Mommy, give me the phone. I want to talk to her. I want to ask her where she got this from. Right. And see, Marisha, that's why it's so important for us to be us. And yes. Do you. Yes. You know, because people are looking and watching. They and are. that's our only opportunity to impress and, and to um, influence them. Yes. You know, how we carry ourselves, um, how we be, how we do, um, it's important. <sighs> Ladies, we got to put our best foot forward. Always. And um, our best us forward. All the time. Our best us forward. It seems like a lot of pressure. I know. Mm. I know. You know what? Too? I'm sorry. I, mm, I, go I, ahead. But sometimes, too, like, you don't feel like we... We were like I think we kind of hinted at it today, yeah. but we feel like we're not worthy of it of being that person. Why not? Yeah, I mean I think for me sometimes I I have that that feeling, especially business wise, of being that that excellent business entrepreneur no, person. No, do it. 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, we, do we, it. You need to not be afraid. Do it. Fear comes in, and but we need to work through the fear because the 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 greatest and the best have failed. Yeah. And then they just you they just do it. do it again. You can do it. Just try again. Yeah, just you can do it. A different approach, a different method, mm-hmm. but do it again. And um, um, this is this is great. This is great. A great way for us to end the show because um, we've been having girl talk. We've been talking about a lot of of deep stuff about who we are and and marriage and single life. Next week, I want us to have a real like I I'm gonna, I'm going to call it a shallow conversation. I'm calling it shallow because we, we need to talk about how we come look at, come out the house looking. Man. I think you maybe so mash my corn a little bit. So anyways, it's, no, we talk about it, Marisha. No, no. <laughs> I'm not trying to mash anybody's corn. I am not corn. a diva like Marisha in spite I, of the, you're eye see, candy and all that makeup. See, no. this is what I want to address because That's just because me. I have my version of how I come look out the house looking doesn't mean that I'm going to influence or push that version on That's you and demand you to be great. And just because I look good, that don't make me a diva. Thanks. I mean, like you look like a diva. Not diva like... <sighs> Attitude diva like my goodness, you look nice. You always do, Marisha. You do. Oh, I am so tired of hearing people say I look like a diva. Diva, not like diva, like in a bad way though. I know. I okay, still let me don't see like if I can it. find another word for it then. I still don't like it. Okay, I can find another word for I it. Still, I still don't like it. You're beautiful. <laughs> I I do bad. But no, we need, I feel like we need to have this conversation. We, we need to, we need to have this conversation. I agree. Um and it's it's gonna be old school. It's gonna be old school. Okay. Dress how you want to be addressed. Okay. Oh boy, you're right. You're right. Old oh school. It's God. gonna be old school. Dress how you want to be addressed. addressed, and that's where we're gonna pick up our conversation. Because, believe it or not, who we are, everything that we do flows out of who, who we, we are. are. And if you have yeah. a f- poor value of yourself, you will present and yourself like- in that way. Mm, that's why I so like this show, man. I like the show because this I, I make an effort. <laughs> to come on on a Monday now. Mondays, I don't come up with yes. all my makeup on, hey, guys. Kias is turned in. Kias is tuned in. Kias is, yes, have that conversation. Yes. Um, hey, Lystra. Lystra was tuned in. Lystra's yeah. our, our, our one male listener. Candace, <laughs> Candace Nubo I was on. I was on. She oh, she was? In. Candice Newball, Kayla Roll. I had Willis so much Dean, people. Terrence, oh my gosh. Staff, De- Deantia, hey, Miss G. Hey, Annie. Chantal, Annie, Corey, Annie. Candy, hey, Kendira Odessa. McKinney was tuned in. Hey, Kendira. Dad, Christina, Stacia, Leticia. We see you guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. All of all of you who are on Facebook Live, all of our radio listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to continue our conversation next week. Pastor EW, it was such a pleasure to oh, have you. He from didn't say anything. All the way up. No, he usually has something deep to say. I guess he was just listening because oh, okay. it's girl talk. Okay, okay. okay. Um, but I'm excited to have, have this conversation. We're, we're going to talk about how we look, man. Yeah. And how, we what are we to doing? We do some challenges too, like one week challenges. You know, we come here every Monday. We need to probably need to put a, I don't know, that just came to me. Like we yeah. need to challenge ourselves with something. As we talk about these little things as a, as a group, we could challenge ourselves like next, mm. you know. So when we talk mm. next week about, you know, going out a particular way, we need to. We need to challenge ourselves. Put some challenges to yeah. that. Yeah, man. What's that? I'm going to put some thought into that. How, yeah, what can please. we challenge women to do? Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Let's do better. Mm-hmm. Let's do better. Let's, let's raise the standard. Yes, please. So that men raise their There's, approach. Uh, I know, right? So that people raise their, their approach. Because it's not yeah. just about men. But people raise their approach, approach to us. Our bosses. Yeah. Our family members. Mm-hmm. The people who come into contact with us. Mm-hmm. That person who think they could talk to us any, any kind of way. How, no, you can't. Mm-mm. I don't like saying this on radio because people just think I follow myself. But we can't breathe the same air. But um, I, I, I just I know we didn't talk about this, Marisha, but I still want to put a little plug in for eye candy today. <laughs> <laughs> right there. <laughs> So we know um, um, Mondays is a mad Monday. So for those of you who really want to get back into the, the swing of things and, you know, putting a little more effort in what you do, Mondays is a good day to come in because we give you 15% off every Monday. I need a brow wax. Yeah, 15% off, girl. Ooh. Take advantage of that. Every Monday, that guys, in. walk in, get that in, make an appointment, do what you got to do. No excuses, man. It's man, let's do it. Let's do it, ladies. No and, and it's not, we, we, we think, maintaining ourselves is expensive it's not let's no. let's stop using excuses let's just do it yeah let's do it because for those mothers and wives are there stop spending all your money on a children and a man <laughs> take some money for yourself yeah man all right but know who you are <laughs> be who you are be make no apologies None. for who you That's are and listen 
let's be intentional about evolution. Let's yeah, be intentional in making changing. ourselves better. Let's be our best selves now in our current state, mm-hmm. but let's be intentional with yeah. making sure that we do not remain stagnant. Yes. And and listen, you are who you are. Love yourself where you're at right now because even if you make the changes, you're not going to love the change version of you yeah. if you don't love the now, now version, version of you. Wow. You're not gonna. Mm-hmm. It's not gonna be any different. Right. If you can't love who you are now, you won't love who you will be. Mm. So you gotta love the mess. You gotta love the confusion. You gotta love all the little so things about purpose. yourself. Yeah, yeah, no, you gotta love it now, yeah. because if you don't love it now, you could change as much as you want. Yeah, you'll never love the changed version of yourself. We love you guys, though. Yeah. We love you guys. We have Thank. All of you in our prayers. Yes, we do. Yeah. We do know that this is not just about fun and conversation and long talk, but. We're considering you and we're praying for you. Mm-hmm. We're praying for you. Well, coming up next is Pastor Monica with her program, a Manifest with PM, How to mm-hmm. Get Your Dreams from Your Head into Your Hands. Mm-hmm. But before she comes, let's jump back into Phil Thompson. The song is called My Response. You're tuning to Glory 93.9 FM. It's 1229 PM. Keep it right where you've got it. Okay. Oh, yes, praise. 